how many times I have thought about the Gold Star parents. We do that event every year to pay tribute to those killed in combat. And we ask the parents of the youngsters to come visit with us so that we can share and we can grieve together. Well, as a, as a non-Gold Star parent, I sometimes am amazed how quick you can scrape the scab of the wound off of a feeling of a Gold Star parent because they just never get over the loss. I said, well, maybe it's not so unusual. I think about my own situation where I lost so many Marines that I have to get up the morning before I come here on this Memorial Day and read my diary of names of those lost under my command. I think about the parents, and you know, we would be devastated, each one of us, if we were a Gold Star parents, because I don't think you'll ever get over it. So that's why today is going to be kind of special, because we have two people in the program, Bill and Mary Shea, who are going to talk about it, and Mary's poetry, she's going to recite her poetry that she writes. I have a favorite repo about what it was like to greet the plane that was bringing the casket back with, his, with their loved one. It's amazing to me that poetry has been Mary's, I would say it was her saving grace that she could have poetry to record her feelings and to not let her feelings go. I just want to say that I think it's helped me too with Mary's poetry. So I'm going to ask if I can have Bill Shea come forth here. In some ways we look and think that um, our son Tim Shea is a representative of the brave military people who have given their life. Tim was a Army Ranger who died on August 25, 2005 on the Syrian border in a uh, operation, a special operation that was designed to close the Syrian border so that the people of Iraq could vote. I suppose on my bucket list is the idea that one day I want to stand in the town square of Baghdad and get on a soapbox and say to those people, my son died so that you could vote. So God damn it, vote. So we are uh, here in a way that is ironically a kind of a blessing that with the loss of our son we have received an incredible amount of support and love from many folks especially the folks here at the Marines Memorial and every year we have a an event for Gold Star parents, which I think has changed the course of the way that we have thought about loss. I'm going to introduce my wife, Mary, who, as General Myatt said, has a way of expressing herself and finding her own way with these things through her poetry. So Mary, if you come on up here. I also want to acknowledge that grieving, you never do it alone. 
And I think I've learned through this journey that how vital the Marines Memorial Association has been to us. I mean, we could not have done it alone. Uh, particularly, sometimes the atmosphere out there is hostile to service. And you feel, even though you're proud, you feel ashamed. Um, and I think by being part of the Gold Star events here, it has brought back the dignity of who we are and the dignity of our son and just the enormous gratitude of being able to be ourselves here above all. And we've never been forgotten too. I just want to acknowledge very briefly, there are two people here that have been part of our journey. And one, uh, Eric Zaborowski, who was in third bat with Tim, has made the journey down. And his wife, Christina, who has now, is on the way of having her second son. So we have, we are, our lives are full and, and we are grateful. And I am a scribbler, as the general said. So I have a poem with IED. I'm not finished being your mother, but I have no tongue left to sing you, to sing you on your way, to sing you on your way home, to sing you on your way home from this war. The blast wave still tremors soft tissue, brain and tongue, and I am still deaf, deaf with the weight, with the heft of silence, dirt clods in my mouth. I am the one buried, smothered in the silence. But I must make a language, gather shards of words to find you in this dark so you can hear my voice, my voice unlovely in this unlovely poem to let you know I am here just in case. The second poem is called poem with IED, and it's on its fifth iteration. This actually um, came out of the experience of trying to wonder, what was I doing when my son was dying? And, um, you know, being caught in time zone differences and, and notifications. So this is Pieta with IED. She logs off, grabs car keys, heads home. As he sits, lead gunner, in the gut and stink of night. Hatches secure, the pander moves, six wheels steady. Grind deep down in grainy sands as the convoy passes, pressure plates triple stacked, Shift, complete the circuit, anti-tank mines, metal shreds. She drives home as his brain swells, his pupils now fixed and dilated, big as the raptor darkness that gouges, guts him. Now the helo, silent as a night owl, lifts him. Six hours later, a knock at the door. Three soldiers. At Dover, MB-24A, deemed viewable. She can't. One of the difficulties, and again, why the Marines Memorial is such a refuge for us, is that the media instantly climbed in and knocked on our door within 24 hours. I mean, with cameras, without being invited. 
And um, thank God the rangers had other rangers there to push him back. So I have a thing about the American media. So this is repo to the American media. And I want to say the experience now is a little bit different. Families are invited to Dover to welcome their loved ones home. At the time, that was not available to us. So you want to photograph his coffin at Dover. It's a transfer case, really. His body still new to death's coupling, unprocessed, body bag, packed in ice and an American flag. Was he bought and paid for like a refrigerated side of beef, just so you could look? See if you got your money's worth? See the nation's expenditure of blood and treasure? So why not? Come close. Lift the lid. Unzip the bag. Smell. Go to Iraq, go to Afghanistan, go to Ramstein, Germany, go to Dover, Delaware, load a ramp down, go to Oakland International Airport, to some anonymous airline on some anonymous night, go to the cargo holding area where space available, he comes in. This time, a coffin, two choices, metal or wood veneer, in a cardboard shipping container. Look carefully, don't touch, he's mine. Thank you for listening. So as we reflect on these things and uh think about them and think about the way that we have been able to come through this experience, an experience probably uh, uh, done by millions of families when we think about all of, the, all of the departed that have lost their lives you know, in that old phrase of so that we can be free, and you know, so that we can vote, goddammit.